In 1977, NASA sent two twin spacecraft with an ambitious goal to cross the planetary domain and reveal the secrets beyond it. Decades later, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 went past the farthest edge of our cosmic backyard and recorded something that caught even the experts by surprise. As they crossed into interstellar space, the instruments detected a sudden rise in plasma temperature, reaching values on the order of 50,000 Kelvin. It was not an actual flame, of course, but an overheated region signaling the boundary of the sun's influence. What exactly is happening there? Why does this wall of fire appear at the border of the solar system? And how do these measurements change the way we understand the solar neighborhood and what lies beyond it? Let's uncover the Voyager's journey, what they saw at the edge of the heliosphere, and why these data redefine the map of our place in the galaxy. When they left Earth, the primary mission was to examine the gas giants and their moons. That part was carried out with mastery, but the plan had a quiet continuity to keep going, always outward, toward the region where the sun's breath loses strength and the galaxy begins to impose its rules. As they advanced, the probes measured the weakening of the solar wind, that constant flow of charged particles streaming from our star and filling a magnetic bubble around all the planets. There was a long-standing prediction on researchers' desks. At an extreme distance, this wind should collide with the thin gas and dust of the space between stars the so-called interstellar medium, forming a boundary known as the heliopause. In 2012, Voyager 1 was the first to cross it. In 2018, Voyager 2 repeated the feat and confirmed the main signs observed by its older sister. What the two crossings revealed was striking. As soon as they reached the transition, the sensors detected a sharp jump in plasma temperature ranging from something like 30,000 to 50,000 Kelvin, which gives a sense of the energy involved. It is not a solid wall, but a passage layer where the outward-moving solar wind is compressed by the pressure of the interstellar plasma pushing in the opposite direction. This compression accelerates particles and heats the environment, creating the effect many describe as a wall of fire. Despite the dramatic name, the spacecraft were never in danger. The plasma there is absurdly rarefied, with less than one particle per cubic centimeter, which makes heat transport almost non-existent. The result was that the Voyagers simply slipped through this turbulent boundary and delivered the first direct evidence of the outer edge of our solar bubble. The data make it clear that the edge of the solar system is not a silent vacuum. It is an active, energetic sector shaped by opposing pressures, plasma motions, and magnetic field lines that reorganize themselves. In other words, a true contact zone between the sun's realm and the interstellar sea. What for a long time had been treated as a theoretical concept gained measurements, numbers, and real behavior. We discovered that the sun's magnetic bubble, the heliosphere, extends far beyond the planet's orbits and is much more dynamic than assumed. It acts like a natural shield, deflecting much of the cosmic radiation wandering through the galaxy. At its boundary, where the solar wind slows down and meets the interstellar medium, the compression becomes enormous and the heating shows up strongly. The classic comparison is a ship's bow cutting through water and producing a wave ahead. There, at the sun's bow, the mark of 30,000 to 50,000 Kelvin reveals a turbulent interface. It is not fire-burning matter, it is the energy of electrically charged particles being boosted by the clash between two cosmic winds, the solar and the interstellar. Another aspect that drew attention was the crossing distance for each probe. Voyager 1 surpassed the heliopause at 121 astronomical units. Voyager 2 made the crossing at 119 astronomical units. This small but real difference indicates that the heliosphere does not have a fixed, rigid radius. It swells and shrinks with the sun's activity cycle, stretching during more active periods and retracting when the star becomes calmer. Even more intriguing were the magnetic field measurements. Many expected to find a very different internal orientation compared to the external one. However, both voyagers recorded fields that were almost parallel inside and outside the boundary, suggesting a smoother transition between the solar and galactic magnetic environments than models predicted. 
Instead of a clean cut, we are looking at a mixing zone, a corridor where magnetic lines draw near, exchange energy, and reconfigure the passage of particles. These readings helped refine how high-energy cosmic rays, originating outside the solar system, penetrate our bubble. The heliosphere behaves like a semi-permeable barrier. Most are deflected, but a fraction manages to get through depending on the sun's state. This affects radiation levels throughout the system, including Earth's neighborhood, and the routes future human missions will take toward deep space. In the end, the picture that emerges is of a living, pulsating border, far from the image of a fixed, placid outline. The sun's heartbeat, with its cycles and eruptions, and the invisible currents of the surrounding galaxy, define the shape of this boundary, pushing and pulling the frontier over time. The passage beyond the heliopause represents the first human incursion into interstellar space by direct presence, not just by telescopes. Understanding this region improves the models that describe how our system interacts with the galactic environment and how the heliospheric shield protects us from radiation. As scientists learn when the bubble expands and when it contracts, it becomes easier to project space weather effects, which is essential for the health of sensitive instruments and, above all, for the safety of astronauts on long journeys. The implications, however, do not stop with the sun. Every star creates its own protective bubble, called an astrosphere, which directly influences the conditions of the planets around it. The size and behavior we measure here become a reference for investigating how other stars shield their worlds. This even helps assess which exoplanets may have environments less battered by radiation, a key point when we think about habitability. Meanwhile, the two probes continue sending very faint signals that still carry unique information. NASA's team carefully manages the remaining power, turning off non-essential instruments to prolong the spacecraft's lives. Every carrier signal that reaches Earth's antennas adds data on plasma density, magnetic field intensity, and cosmic ray flux in interstellar space, a territory no other equipment had directly probed. At some point, likely in the 2030s, the power will no longer be sufficient and transmissions will cease. The probes will fall silent, but they will not stop. They will keep traveling for billions of years, carrying the golden records with images and sounds of our home, a message in a bottle crossing the ocean between the stars. But the voyagers are not the limit. A proposed interstellar probe aims to go about three times farther, equipped with modern sensors able to map the heliosphere's full structure and explore the interstellar medium around the sun in greater detail. Investigations like this may answer a central curiosity. Is the warm wall recorded by the voyagers a particular feature of our star, or a trait present in the bubbles of many other systems scattered across the Milky Way? If it is something common, we will have a universal element of stellar architecture. If it is specific, we will learn what makes our shield unique. The border of the solar system is not silent. It is an overheated, dynamic outline, sculpted by opposing pressures, plasma currents, and intertwined magnetic fields. Almost half a century after launch, the two spacecraft continue to expand the reach of human knowledge, now outside the bubble that protects us. When they touched the boundary, they did not find emptiness, but the sun's vital signal interacting with the galaxy. And this pulse, recorded in extremely high temperatures and field variations, tells the story of how our cosmic home converses with the surrounding environment and how, little by little, we are learning to read that conversation to better understand where we are and where we can go. Subscribe, leave a like, and share. Thank you, and see you next time.